Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 1 to 9. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts and set him for their watchman, if, when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So though, son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel, therefore thou shalt hear the word of my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die, if thou dost not speak to, the, to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die, as iniquity, die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. You know, a lot of people like to say Ezekiel 33 has no application to us in this current dispensation, the dispensation of grace, the church age. But I do believe there is an application in here for us. Let me explain. First off, just like in Ezekiel chapter 33, we see the sword coming upon the land. We see the tribulation period casting its shadow on the earth right here and right now. It's crazy in this world right now, but this is nothing compared to what is coming. In fact, in the book of Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7, we read the following. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 21, we read, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. So the worst time in human history is coming. It is not here yet. This is nothing compared to what is coming. But we see this coming tribulation period casting its shadow on the earth right here and right now. And we are told we will know that we are in the season of the Lord's return. We will see the day approaching. And if we're watching, that day will not catch us off guard. In fact, the Apostle Paul in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 4, puts it very plainly. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. We will see the day approaching. If we're watching, when that day comes, it will not catch us off guard like a thief. Unfortunately, for a majority of the world who's so caught up in this world, it's going to catch them off guard because they're not watching. But we see, just like in Ezekiel chapter 33, we see the sword coming upon the land. And what are we supposed to do? We are to warn the people. As ambassadors of Jesus Christ, our job is to warn a lost world that Jesus is coming soon. But most importantly, it is to give them the gospel of their salvation, which the Apostle Paul gives us in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. And the gospel of their salvation is simply this. Jesus Christ died on, their cross, died on that cross for their sins. He was buried, and he rose from the dead. He resurrected on the third day, as it is written in the scriptures. Again, we can't save anybody, folks. All we can do is plant the seeds. You know, in 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 4 to 9... The Apostle Paul says the following, For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth, and he that watereth, are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. So all we can do is plant the seeds and let God provide the increase in his timing.
right? But we see the sword coming, just like in Ezekiel chapter 33, right? We see the sword coming upon the land. But before the tribulation period does begin, Jesus Christ will rapture all those who are saved, snatch away suddenly, remove, rapture his church before this tribulation period begins. Things are converging and intensifying all over the world like never before, just like Jesus said they would in his word. Jesus likens his return, his second coming, which is at the end of the seven-year tribulation period, to a woman in travail that's about to give birth. Right before the baby comes, again, the contractions are going to intensify. They're going to get closer and more intense. The birth pangs are going to increase in intensity and frequency all the way up until the delivery of the child. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now all over the world. The birth pangs are increasing in intensity and frequency all over the world. The stage is getting set up for the rise of the Antichrist in the New World Order after the rapture of the church. People are being conditioned to submit to government and authoritative rule. People are being conditioned to eventually accept the coming mark of the beast, uh, which will be implemented during the coming tribulation period, which we are not in yet. Watchmen and watchwomen all over the world are saying the same thing. Jesus is coming, and he is coming at any moment to rapture his church. You make a difference, whoever you are watching this. You make a difference. You are an ambassador. If you're saved, you're an ambassador for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, and we have a job to do. So blow your trumpets, all you watchmen and watchwomen out there. Rise up with me, because we have a job to do in these final moments. In the days, weeks, and months ahead, Lord willing, unless Jesus comes for his church. Again, we're watching every day on this channel. But as things get crazier around this world, in the days, weeks, and months ahead, Lord willing, we need to blow the trumpets, folks. We have a job to do. And again, our job is to tell people, again, that Jesus is coming, and he is coming at any moment to rapture his church. We need to tell people that Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven, and he's the only name that's going to save them. And our job, the most important thing above all else, is the gospel of their salvation. The gospel is the plumb line. And again, our job is to give people the gospel of their salvation in a simplistic form. Not give them religion or legalism or complicate the message, but tell them they can be saved right here, right now, this very moment, and tell them that now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. But again, our job is to give them the gospel of their salvation. Again, which is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. We need to tell people that Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins. He paid their sin debt in full with his blood on the cross at Calvary. He paid the price that they could never pay on their own. He paid it, and he paid it with his blood so that they could be reconciled back to him, so they could be forgiven of their sins and be with him forever in heaven. So we need to tell people, again, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins. He was buried and he resurrected. He rose from the dead on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. We need to give people that message and then pray for them. We need to pray that the seed we just planted as ambassadors of Jesus Christ, again, our job is to tell them the gospel, which is the plumb line, that Jesus died for them, he was buried, and he rose from the dead on the third day, as it is written in the scriptures. And we need to pray for that person. We need to pray that God will bring to fruition that seed that we planted. If not now, then during the tribulation period, because we know multitudes get saved during the coming tribulation period. Uh, I, I don't wish that upon anybody. They're most likely going to be killed for their faith during the coming tribulation period. But all we can do as ambassadors for Christ is to plant that seed and let God provide the increase in his timing, preferably before the rapture of the church. But watchmen and watchwomen all over the world, we have a job to do. In the days, weeks, and months ahead, Lord willing, we have a job. So blow your trumpets, watchmen and watchwomen all over the world, because make no mistake about it, that day is approaching. Keep watching with me. Keep looking up. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, he's coming. And he's coming quickly, one day very soon at the appointed time, sooner than many of us even realize. Keep watching with me, and God bless you all.